hello everyone what's good what's popping welcome welcome back to my channel it's your girl caroline coming at you with not one not two but three easy super girly feminine hairstyles that i feel are gonna be perfect for the upcoming valentine's holiday date night prom wedding just whatever it may be where you want to give romantic soft feminine energy if you're interested in seeing how i achieved any of these looks or you want to spend some time with your girl then sit back relax and let's get right into today's tutorial <laughs> Bad things, fine as hell, thick as fuck, oh my god, that's my baby, Caroline. The wig that we're working with today is from Ashmere Hair Company. And first of all, look how cute the little Valentine's Day PR packaging was. Like, okay, Ashmere, like if you're trying to get married, just say so. But anyways, this is their 360 lace wig. They sent me 24 inches in light yaki, 180% density. I feel like this wig is gonna be the perfect one for this video because one already comes pre-plucked, pre-bleached, pre-cut lace. So basically all the customization done for you out of the box. But better yet, I want to try a 360 wig for these hairstyles. Styles. In case you're wondering what is a 360 wig, it's literally just the frontal wig with extra lace in the back, making it easier for you to do things like updos, ponytails, without having to show the back of the wig and like the tracks and all of that. I normally stay away from these type of wigs because I'm not a big fan of gluing and laying stuff in the back of my head. I have a very low hairline in the back, but this one I really like because it has these invisible straps that makes it very easy for you to put it on gluelessly and still have that effortless updo look without showing the tracks. Installing this wig was quite simple. I started off by just applying some foundation onto the lace to get the exact shade match as my forehead. The company said that you should use their LPTS system when applying the invisible band in the back of the wig for the 360 part. So the L stands for loosen. So I went ahead and just loosen up all of the bands in the wig so you can make sure you get a nice good fit. And then two is pull, so P. So you go ahead and pull the little invisible elastic strands on the side of the wig to create a nice little scrunching effect right there as you see then you can go ahead and toss t toss the wig back on and s secure the wig down securing means for me clipping the clips in the backs for the front i just go ahead and spray some ebb and lay spray and use my blow dryer to help lock and dry it in and get the elastic band to get everything nice and melted and that's essentially it. It was super easy install and look how good it looks in the back of the wig. Like I usually don't pull my hair up or do certain updos, but this is completely glueless, no sprays, nothing. And it looks very effortless. And mind you, I do have a bit of a lower hairline. So a little bit of my hair will poke out. They do give you some little fray strands right here in the back to give you extra glueless cover, which I really like in case, you know, you bend your head down and the lace starts to poke up. It's still very seamless and unnoticeable. And of course, if you want to actually glue it down, spray it down in the back you'll have a lot more securability but i'm not one for that so overall i was quite impressed with how easy this was to get this type of look now into the styling hairstyle number one is a classic middle part with curtain bangs and curls like tell me this is not giving girly girl okay now this hairstyle is going to be the foundation of all the other hairstyles so i'm going to go the most in-depth and detailed with this one starting off with the cutting and layering i went ahead and just gave the hair an overall blunt chop at the ends because this is a 24 inch wig but i felt like the ends and the hair wasn't super full so to give it a nice full look i just gave it a really big chop I like my hair to look really full, especially when I'm curling it. It's just something about having thin, straggly ends and curls. It just doesn't give the look you want it to give. So after I went ahead and cut the base length of the hair, I went ahead and just started creating my bangs. So I went with my hot comb and just pressed the hair downwards, but kind of like at an angle, not going side to side, but at a slight angle i don't know visually that makes sense so i could have the hair fall down in my face a certain way for the bangs and then going in with my razor starting around my collarbone i just started cutting some light layers going at an angle as well i like to cut my layers a little bit lower at first and i like to just like toss the hair like this so i can see where i want it to follow my face whenever it is curled and then wherever it like falls I start to cut from there so here I'm just kind of like I just like bend the hair a little bit to see how I want it to move or how it's gonna fall and then I use my finger to pinch the place and go with that same razor and just cut it down and the rest everything going down at an angle I do have like a detailed layer cutting face framing layer cutting tutorial that I'll link up above if you want more like in-depth explanation but overall I hope this gives like a light gist of how I cut my bangs and my layers 
When it comes to cutting layers, I prefer using a razor than scissors. I feel like the razor just glides down at an angle and kind of like thins the hair off at the end. Sometimes the scissors can leave like a blunt choppy look. But once I've cut the bangs and the layers to my liking, now let's get into the curling. Here I am just going off in sections and pre-sectioning my hair. I like to pre-section my hair before I start curling because I feel like it helps me make sure I'm working in sections and not getting lazy towards the end and doing big chunky pieces because for these curls I did want them to be a little bit smaller so I had to make sure I was using smaller sections. Here I'm just showing you guys that I'm using a little bit of a light hold spray before going in with a flat iron because I did want these curls to really keep their shape and this being yakky hair. Sometimes yakky hair doesn't hold a curl as well but surprisingly this hair did hold a good curl but I just wanted the curls to keep a shape so I ended up using a little bit of a light holding spray before curling to curl my hair I went ahead and used a flat iron this time but honestly for this style you can use any curling tool that you feel comfortable with curling just I wanted like really noticeable curls so don't use anything over one and a half to one fourth inch because I don't want really big wave curls I wanted actually defined curl looking curls so that's why i use my flat iron i feel like my flat iron kind of makes those type of curls the best and then right here going in with got to be which is a heavier holding spray to really help the curl hold its shape and the style last long for these curls i was doing a combination of curls going away from my face and curls going towards my face because normally whenever I do my typical curls going away from my face that gives me that Kim K early 2000 Kim K look where all the curls start to form together and you have like a bit of a wave curl situation but I didn't want that for this look I wanted to look like curls I don't know how to explain it I want the curls to keep a shape and be visible so doing alternating towards and away from your face helps the curls not comb and fall together so you can, each of them is very visible and people say this doing it this way makes the curls last longer i don't think so i think it just gives a more defined curled look which is what i was going for the only section that i actually did make the only section that i intentionally made sure it was going away from my face was the curtain bang area going away from my face but also upwards so that way i could get that little like swoopy look so you want to go away from your face but also keeping the hair pulled upwards i hope visually that makes sense once i was done curling the hair and i took off the elastic band i went ahead and just used my fingers to gently separate through the hairs normally i use like a brush and brush through my curls but like i said i wanted to keep the shape the integrity of the curls so i just used my fingers to help me lightly separate them because i did want some volume in the hair but i also didn't want the curls to lose their shape it's okay if your curls look a little uh, frazzled after you finish curling them because the other thing about curling you still have to do a lot of like manipulating and playing around with the hair for you to get it to look exactly how you want it to look so first I went in by going with a hot comb and just pressing down the hair at the top to make everything nice and flat especially the bang area and you also see me using my finger to help just twist and twirl the curls around to help some curls reform and just kind of like keep playing with the hair and shaping and manipulating it to form the way you want it to form around your face sometimes that might even mean you have to go back in and curl a certain curl i didn't curl right i feel like curls i've never curled my hair on my first try and be like yep this is it let's leave the house no you gotta curl it and then you do the step two of manipulating playing around and extra curling to give the curtain bangs that whole curtain bang illusion i did go ahead and use my hot comb to press the roots underneath so that way the hair is lifting upwards and then go back and press it down to the side so it's like going up and also to the side that's how you get the like bang look of the hair you got to make sure you're pushing those roots upwards underneath once I finally tweaked and prayed with the hair enough to my satisfaction, I went in with some got to be just a little bit on the top to help hold the curtain bang style and keep everything nice and flat and to get rid of any flyaways. But yeah, that was it for look number one. And funny enough, I was actually going on a date this night when I was filming this, so it was very fitting. I don't know, something about this hair is just so soft and feminine, especially when you add the little short curtain bangs in the front. Like it just screams, I'm just a girl, okay? And honestly, my date was like, oh my God, your hair looks so cute. You look so pretty and i really felt cute and pretty but yeah that is it for look number one let's get right into look number two so look number two is a little half up half down but still keeping that curtain bang aesthetic going on it's a bit more fun and flirty than the first hairstyle because i don't know something about ponytails just give girly fun and flirty 
So this was the next morning actually because I went on my date the night before and to preserve the curls from last night I just used the flexi rods. I also wanted to test out how bouncier the curls would be with the flexi rods. They came out bouncy at first but after a minute you'll see in the next clip they did drop a little bit. But if you want to preserve your curls flexi rod is a great way, a great way to go. Since we already had the foundation of the hairstyle already done, the curls, the bangs, making this style is actually really quite simple. I went ahead and figured out where I wanted my bangs to be because I didn't want just the curtain bangs. I wanted a little bit of that extra longer piece right there to give it more of a, I don't know, classy look. So once I figured out how much hair I wanted to leave out in the front, I started brushing the rest of the hair to the back, sectioning half of it off. Not exactly half because this hair, the density is not super thick, so I didn't want to take too much out of the hair. Like I'd rather have the ponytail not have as much hair, but I have like a lot of hair coming downwards. It just gives a more fuller look that way. If you have like extra bundles laying, laying around, you can go ahead and like wrap some bundles around the ponytail. That's like a little trick I do sometimes to make my half up half down look a lot fuller when the wig I have is not super thick like that. But that's only really when I want to do like a half up half down and have the hair on top fall downwards. But since the hair is going to be in the back, it really isn't that serious. Once I figured out where I wanted the ponytail to be and where I wanted the bangs in the front to be, just make sure you got your positioning right. I just went ahead with my little scrunchy hair tie, whatever you call it, and just tie the hair back. Here is the final look of look number two, and it was just so cute and flirty and, again, girly. Y'all gonna hear this word a lot in this video because this is a girly hairstyle video. I don't know, but I really just like this hair, and I look like swinging my ponytails. You can see back and forth, like I said, girly, flirty, fun. <laughs> okay, I'll stop trying to use those words. Now, hairstyle number three, she might be last, but trust me, she is not the least because she is actually my favorite out of all these hairstyles. And all I really did for this hairstyle was just go ahead and just take down that half up half down situation that we had earlier and I went in with a brush and started just brushing everything smooth still keeping those same little two pieces down and I'm basically just trying to create myself a nice little low ponytail that I'm going to be twisting and flipping upwards but since I'm going to be doing an updo I had to make sure I secured that 360 invisible band situation we got going on in the back once I was able to locate the little clear strings that you're supposed to pull to help scrunch it up, I pulled it on both sides to get it nice and scrunchied. And then I just used the clips to clip it into my braid at the bottom. So that way when the hair is flipped upwards, you cannot see the back at all. Normally when I do this hairstyle with other wigs, I usually do a low ponytail and then clip it up but since I realized that I could actually get a higher ponytail look I went ahead and brushed the hair up just a little bit not like a high pony but more like a mid ponytail it's okay if the back is like lifting right now because I'm going to secure it better later on I just wanted to be able to like get it to mid length the back of my head and then do a little twisting motion and clip it with a claw clip on top once I have the hair clipped on I just go ahead and just split it like in two like this is already a look, like this little like hair falling down. This was a definitely a cute little fun flirty look. We could call this look number three as well. But I wanted this to be more of a cleaned up, classy, elegant look. Something that you might want to wear to prom, a wedding. You just want to like give, you know, classy woman. So I did a bit of a pin curl thing going on. So you just take the curls, wrap them on your finger. And I use bobby pins to just stick them into the wig and secure them. To really help secure that back part because since I had it really high up it was just lifting a little bit in the back and I want it to be more no not noticeable so I went with a bobby pin and since it is lace I was able to just stick the bobby pin right through the lace and push it into my braid on both sides and that really helped it stay nice and flat without any lifting and I just pulled a little bit of those extra hairs they give you just in case you know just give like extra coverage but yeah that was it for look number three and this is my favorite y'all like it's something about it maybe because I was wearing blue I was feeling like Cinderella, like it's giving princess, okay? Here's a look at how the back situation was glowing and it was looking pretty good. Like I said, I do have a very low hairline, so a lot of the times my hair will peek out. Doesn't matter what type of situation we got, 360 or not. So don't mind the little hairs peeking out. But it looks really good and I feel like I would feel comfortable enough to wear this in public. Because normally when I do this hairstyle, I don't wear it in public. I just kind of do it for a cute little at home style, but 
can't leave my house looking like that because the back be looking ridiculous so shout out to you ash mary hair for giving us this 360 wig that we don't have to glue down but yeah that is all i have for you guys look wise we ran through all three slash four because that bonus one i gave you which one was your favorite was it this one was it the other one or the very first one comment down below but with that said, it's time for me to bid you guys adieu. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and you watch it to the end. You're the real one, the real MVP. And I'll see you guys in another one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Goodbye.